Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokers Mystery. And this will be part 306. We're continuing with our lesson titled Way Station Earth, which will be part 5. Scripture teaches each person's place in eternity will be the result of his own choices made in his time on earth. Unsaved people, those that have no relationship with the Lord, are not interested in having one, don't believe in God. Unsaved people will spend eternity in the torment region called the Lake of Fire. Mm -hmm. Turn to Revelation 20, verse 15. <coughs> And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. This speaks about the majority of the human race. It's their destiny. Mm. Let's go on. <clears throat> Scripture teaches those who have a relationship with Christ <coughs> are to value it and develop it. Philippians, the second chapter, verse 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Do not take your relationship with Christ for granted. <coughs> Scripture teaches those who fail in their relationship with Christ by turning their back on him will spend eternity in the region called outer darkness Matthew 25 verse 30 Let me ask you a question Mr. Jones Yes sir That scripture that we just read in Philippians 2.12 mm -hmm. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Mm -hmm. What if you decide not to act on that commandment? Well, then you're going to have judgment to deal with. So it's not just accepting Christ, it's beyond that. Yes, you have to cultivate the relationship with Christ. Mm -hmm. He's consistently saying, if you love me, you'll do this, you'll do that, you'll do the other. The individual... It, that's a warning. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Don't take your relationship with Christ for granted. It has to be number one in your life. That's minimum. Christ came and died a horrible death so he could establish a relationship with us. We could have fellowship with him. So Paul, understanding this, writes this under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Treasure the opportunity that you have to develop Nurture, strengthen the relationship on a daily basis. Otherwise, there are consequences. Mm. Matthew 25, verse 30. And cast, cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. 
He's a servant. He had a relationship, but it didn't profit the Lord. Uh, we are an investment. God spent a lot of time, put a lot of effort into having the situation, the conditions into which we could become attached to Him through Christ. And He expects, like any investment, a profit, a return on His investment. Yes? How could this, this, this servant, could have, how could he have avoided the proclamation he got by becoming, doing what, Mr. Jones? Well, what he was given to do. He's given a certain amount to develop. In this respect, this parable talks about individuals, one receiving um, five pounds, another receiving two pounds, one receiving one pound a pound, represents your place, your gift, your calling in the body of Christ. What you are here to do. He only had one pound, which meant that he was a minimum requirement for him to do that. So, yes. What if you don't know what your calling is? No. What, what do you do? No, no, that's no excuse. Because when you read this, you find that he knew exactly what he had to do. He took what he had to do and he buried it. So he knew. And in that respect, you bury something you consider trash, refuge. You don't value it. What is the difference between the outer darkness torment region and any other torment region? Well, it has to do with the relationship the person had in this life. The implication being that the outer darkness is the Reserved uppermost. for the servants of God who did not ma ma uh, 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 um, bring forth what they were supposed to bring forth. Don't the pastors in Jeremiah 1, 23, 1 and 2 end up in outer darkness? They, uh, they do. False teachers do. Everybody that was... The reason it's out of darkness was because God calls the individual to be a light. Okay. He doesn't become a light, then he's, he's eternally going to experience darkness. darkness. Scribes and the Pharisees, mm -hmm. yeah. everybody who was called to participate in any way in God's program. Mm -hmm. It's out of darkness. Yes. Could you say this one, well, he hid his talent, meaning he didn't, he, he didn't attempt to be a prophet to, the, uh, to God by exercising what he could do. So now, is it because the Father has given each one of us abilities and those of us that have the abilities we give outside of or we give pertaining to our what we have the abundance of. So um, it is if a person is given something in abundance and within his midst are his brothers and sisters that are suffering at some level this person being able to do it and did not help, is that like hiding your, uh, your talent? Well, it's an act of disobedience. James talks about that. So if you see your brother have need and you hold back, even though you have the ability to meet that need, God considers it sin. But we're talking about this individual. What he does is he deliberately withholds his participation and what God has called him to do. Not only does he withhold it, he, he, he uh, in, in, in God's sight, he has, this, like Esau, he has despised what God has entrusted him with and uh, given him to do by burying it. He could have laid it aside or neglected it, but at least preserved it. But he shows his contempt for it by burying it. So in that respect, what he's saying is he doesn't, he doesn't value what God has entrusted him with. And his relationship with God is on a far lesser scale than his own priority systems in life. Uh, case in point, give an example. There was a young man who went to this church years and years and years ago, 
brilliant musician. Brilliant. He could uh, come up with musical harmonies on his... He played the trumpet and um, <clears throat> whenever he would he would play, he would bless everybody. Well, his mom determined that that wasn't good enough. She wanted him to get to um, have a career in a band in the world somewhere. So she took him out of church and I don't know what happened, but I know it never would never end well for them. She took his talent and buried it. Hmm. And uh, at the end of it, what will happen is he, he's going to face some dire consequences and she's going to face even more dire consequences because she was the one that was responsible for having him uh, shut down his connection with his calling. Mr. Yes. Jones, what I'm seeing is a man started off doing as the father would lead him to do and then decided not to continue in that fashion and to enjoy the world the way he wanted to. Yeah, that's burying your talent. Okay. Uh, Sam Cooke's father. Sam Cooke was a gospel singer. He's, you can still hear some of the songs he sang on the okay. internet. I didn't know that. That's interesting. Yeah. His father talked him out of it and said that uh, he, he could be an entertainer in the world. Right. So Sam Cooke left the gospel. It's like Elvis Presley left, the, the went out into the world. He died a horrible death. Somebody shot him to death. And uh, on and on and on and on it went. Most of these guys came out of uh, godly uh, callings. They would sing a play for the Lord and they that yield to this temptation to go out into the world and get fame and fortune and all the rest of it. And it never ended well. It always mm -hmm. ended tragedy. But let's go on. So he said this is an unprofitable servant. Turn to Matthew 8. We're going to read verses 11 to 12. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and the west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Everybody, anybody that's called their relationship with Christ and fails in that relationship is going to be become a, a, a resident, a denizen of the darkness regions mm. of outer darkness. Of the levels of outer darkness. I believe so. Yeah, yes. Depending on how egregious the thing is. Yeah. Yeah. See, why does it call it but the children of the kingdom? And then, the, and then their eventual thing is their outer darkness. Because they were to inherit the kingdom. It's talking about people that have a calling that connects them to an inheritance in the kingdom. He's saying people who didn't have a calling are going to come in and enjoy it with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But they themselves, because they rejected God, are never going to experience it. Basically, he's talking, of course, about the scribes and the Pharisees and those in the generation of Jesus that rejected him. That's what I have written here, scribes and Pharisees. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, had they received them, they would have been, had an integral inheritance in the kingdom. I'll take that portion, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go on. <clears throat> Next principle, scripture indicates those who finish their course with nothing to show for their time here, but their saving faith, in other words, you have to be born again. How were you born again? You have to have a faith foundation. Your belief in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, your confession of that belief is what saves you. It's called saving faith. <clears throat> if at the end of the course, the person, this is all they have, they will spend eternity on the new earth 
under the rulership of the kings of the earth. They will never have access to enter into the heavens. Turn to Revelation 21, verse 23 to 24. Here we see the New Jerusalem on the New Earth in its glory. We see the Father has descended in the New Jerusalem and is residing on the New Earth. And we see the positions of people <coughs> beyond the city. 23. The city had no need of the sun. You have the moon to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it. And the Lamb is the light thereof. So God the Father, God the Son, and the Bride are going to light up the new Jerusalem. Verse 24. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. So those that just have a saving faith and they have no development, no fruit, Nothing to show for their time here except the fact that they they entered into a relationship with Jesus Christ and they maintained that relationship on a basic state, never going beyond it, are going to wind up on the new earth perpetually. Yes. Fruit and treasure, same thing? No. Fruit is a result of your works. Treasure is a result of your addition to, it's like a tithe and offering. You have to have fruit. And then your treasure comes in when the fruit goes beyond the minimum requirement. Well, in this case, turn to uh, uh, Isaiah, the um, 66th chapter. Now what will happen, what we, what we see in Revelation 21 is these, the nations of them that are saved, do not dwell in, the Jeru in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. They dwell outside of it. They dwell in the light of Jerusalem on the new earth. And the reason for that is because they cannot abide in the city because they do not have a glory. They can't, the, the conditions of light are too great for them. They have to abide beyond the focus of light <coughs> on the new earth itself. Uh, yes. Are they considered mortal? No. no. They're immor immortal. Yeah, everybody's eternal. Okay. This is the new earth, the eternal state. Okay. <coughs> uh, remember what we said. In eternity, <coughs> everything is measured in terms of light density. Mm. So the dynamics of the person dwelling in the city has to be sufficient to dispel the effects of it if you didn't have the dynamics. Everybody in the city has a glory. And it's that glory that dispels the, the effects. The glory of is the light level at which you dwell. There are levels of glory. Here on the earth those in the city of a you have Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Old Covenant saints who have a glory. Kings of the earth have a glory. It's not the glory you have in heaven. They can't get into the heaven because they don't have the glory. Right. So there are levels. They have an earth glory which enables them to reside in the presence of the Father, the Son, and the Bride. Okay. So the light or the glory from the Father and the Son who are the light source don't detrimentally affect somebody who doesn't have any glory at all. Yes, it does. That's the point I'm getting to. Yes. So then there is a detrimental effect to it. Sure, that's why they're outside the exactly. city. Exactly. That's what right. I'm saying. They can't come in because they can't abide in the light of those that are inside the 
city. They can co only come in the street mm -hmm. at a certain time to get the leaves of the tree, and then they got to go out. They come in to worship the Father, then they got to go out. Right. Yes. Okay, but where the come where the kings come in? What? You're, you're talking about the just the immortals. The kings also bring the immortals' glory into the city. Yes. Yes. How long can those who don't have the dynamis be in the city? You said they come in and then they go out. How yeah, long? Yeah, just time? a short time. Like what? Minutes? Hours? Days? Uh depending upon what they need to do, right. they're given the time to do it. I was when your time is up, it's eternity. Yeah, it's no time. No, but it's time here on the New Earth. You got days and seasons. Okay. Uh, and they're given a certain point in which they're able to limit what needs to be done and then they're out. But for the most part, they don't come in the city at all. Uh, their their ability to come in is only because they have to. Okay. Out of necessity. Now you said that those who do have the glory, the various uh, saints, mm -hmm. reside at the level that their, you know, their glory uh, equates those, to. Those that have the glory reside in the city. They take the glory their glory into the city with them. Mm -hmm. They take the glory of the nations with them. The glory of the nations doesn't belong to the nations, it belongs to the kings. Mm -hmm. As a result of their authority to rule over these okay. nations of them that are saved. Okay. So the glory represents the characteristic of that nation. Mm -hmm. The nation doesn't have any glory. They only have eternal life on the new earth. Under the glory, the glory belongs to the king who's ruling over them in that respect. He's connected to the city, more so than to the land beyond the city. And you read periodically they're coming out of ruling over the nations to reside back in the city with the saints, with the other kings. You have a, a caste system here. Is it possible for a saint with glory, a small amount of glory, to be in the, the city and it's too bright. They don't, it, when you say a saint, what are you re referring a, to? A, a lower level priest is what I'm referring to. A non protodicus priest. In fact, we're talking about the people of the saints. The people of the saints is a better way to put it. The people of the saints are the kings that are ruling. Okay. Because that's the that, that's the kingdom they were given in the in the heavens. Yeah, we're okay. going to be talking about that in this last. But thing. the kingdom of the saint can he walk into the city, and have his glory diminished such that it's detrimental to him? The the when you say the the saint, you're talking about Prototokos. No, I'm talking about the peoples of the saint. He yeah. is now a king. These are the people of the saints, the kings, the kings that are bringing the glory. I in the agree saint. with you. Okay. And there are people under them, aren't there? No. So they're the very lowest level of people. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I misunderstood what you were saying. The right. people under them are the, <laughs> just ones that have uh, uh, salvation. Okay. The, the the masses, if you will. The being who have no glory whatsoever. Yeah. No, right. no. So the lowest level, the people of the saints. People of the saints. Can the lowest level people of the saints walk into the city and have a detrimental effect upon them because they don't have glory sufficient? They dwell in the city. So then th there's no problem with them having... No, no. It says they bring their glory with them in the city. It's commensurate with the conditions within the city. It's their glory. They feel just as comfortable there mm. as anybody else. They don't reside there. They just come and go. They come and go because their rulership is out beyond the city. But their, their identity is in the city because they have a glory commensurate with the conditions of the city. And in that respect, they that's why they call the kings of the earth. They mm -hmm. dominate the new earth as a result of uh, your inheritance. What's their relationship to the elders? The elders We're elders. going to cover that in the lesson uh, through scripture. The only ones... Being kings. No, being yeah, kings. The <laughs> only ones that aren't, uh, that are on the outside, are the nations of them that are saved. The only ones that aren't what? The only ones that are on the outside okay. are the nations of them that are saved. Okay. Inside you got people like David, who's a, a instrument 
you know, of of Israel. He's still a king, right? He's still a king of the earth. Sure. Yeah. Right. He's one of the kings of the earth. Okay. But he's a but he's king. His king is oh, kingdom is over Israel. Right. These others are dealing with the nations of them that are saved, that are coughed up into different kingdoms under the rule of a king of the earth. Does anybody who is a king of the earth have rulership over a nation which is a non-human species? Sure. All of them? Well, a good percentage of them. Okay. Sure. Definitely. And we're going to cover that also. Praise the time. Lord. Okay, Isaiah 66. Picking it up. Verse 22 to 24. For the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, saith the Lord. So shall your seed and your name remain. Because so it's talking about the eternal state. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, so you have times and seasons here, mm -hmm. and from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. Notice he uses the term flesh. Yes. He's not talking about physical because there's no physical here. He's talking about the lowest state in the spiritual realm. The nations of them that are saved. Mm -hmm. They live by the flesh in this life. So when they go into eternity, the only thing that saves them is their saving faith. They never got off the earth. That's why they're called flesh. Mm -hmm. Everybody else is called spirit. Right. But they are spirit. Yeah, they're spiritual okay. beings. They're, they're, they're eternal. <clears throat> they don't die. But they don't have an inheritance in the sure. spiritual. Sure. Yes. They don't die and they don't eat? Sure, they eat. They got, the earth is festooned, trees, uh, lush, plush, uh, foliage, and everything. Everybody eats. Is it necessary to sleep? No. Mm. No. Nobody. So people just spend their time eating and having fun. Sure. You're in, you're in glory, uh, paradise. You know, no, no sin, no corruption, uh, pleasure, but you're experiencing all that on the lowest level. What about these ones called flesh? Do they need to sleep? No. Okay. Nobody sleeps in the spiritual realm. Mm. <clears throat> and so come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. And they shall go forth. So they will come into the city, worship, then they go out of the city. And shall look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. For their worms shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched. They shall be an abhorring unto all flesh. So he's talking about the reason this happens is the Father's letting them know that their only reason that they're there is because of His grace. Right. So those who are doing the looking upon those in the torment regions are only one rung up from those. In, they're, they're the very lowest they could possibly be. Yep. There, can't be any, there can't be any level lower than no. that. No, no, lower than that, you'd be with them. Right. There by the grace of God. Come on. Hmm. Why? Because they didn't have anything to show for their time here. Their works were burnt up. Mm -hmm. They didn't have any fruit. So they got no position in eternity. But they do have their saving faith. They died believing in the Lord Jesus. Now, these are not those who refused to develop their talents. Merely, they either didn't have time things got in the way, they weren't that faithful. It was not, it was not the first calling in their life. It's just exactly what you just said. Right, right. They prioritized everything, right, else everything else above yeah. their calling, what they were supposed to do in life. And the only thing that saved them was the fact that they, their saving faith was unshakable in that respect. They believed the Lord Jesus saved them. And they took that with them into eternity. But that was it. Should we understand that the only reason that 
the ones you've just described, what are you calling the, this group? This group? Yeah. The nations of them that the are saved? The nations of them that are saved are not responsible for not allowing others to learn what they've been given. Because had that been the case, sure. then they would have been in all they sorts of trouble. They would have fruit. Yeah. But not, or if they failed, they'd be in all sorts of trouble, which is really where I was going. All right. Yes. Which brings us to the next principle. Now we're going to look, we're going to deviate just slightly. Looking at people who have opportunities or don't have opportunities to grow in a relationship. Scripture indicates Paul was given revelation knowledge from Christ, which he presented to the apostles. <clears throat> Galatians, the first chapter, verse 11 and 12. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. So what Paul is saying here, the gospel that the apostles were preaching and teaching <coughs> was not the same, well, I'm going to say not the same, but it was not <coughs> on the level of what Paul was preaching and teaching. Yes. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. So the principles of the gospel that Paul was teaching and preaching was not being taught or preached by the other apostles. And there's no proof that any Gentile who had received Paul's doctrine went to Jerusalem to hear the other version. They wouldn't let him in. No. Well, no, clear. they wouldn't want to go. <laughs> the only reason they went was because Paul says I was called to go back uh, to make, you know, reconciliation with them. No, but they were Greek Jews. Yeah. Various of them. They, they, they went back. Went back where? With Paul. Paul went to Jerusalem with uh, Apollos and Barnabas, I believe. Yeah, well, he went with basically the Gentiles. He took Timothy... And he took um, Titus, I believe, mm -hmm. and some of the others. But uh, when you talk about the Greek Jews, the Hebrew Jews, they were already in Jerusalem. Okay. Were there any Jews who were in Greece or, or uh, Asia who, upon becoming Messianic, completely renounced all levels of Jewishness? No. Mm. No, they always kept their Jewish identity. Because <clears throat> these were Jews that basically were, remember, they had been in Jerusalem in the day of Acts. They participated in the church. They participated in the apostles' doctrine. They left, left to go back to the Jewish communities of the, of the diaspora. They were schooled in the, in the, in the teachings of the apostles, okay. not the teachings of Paul. What I was actually referring to was the... Jews who lived in diaspora. Mm -hmm. So in other words, they weren't in, in uh, Jerusalem, they didn't go back to Jerusalem, but they kept a Jewish identity. I'm asking if there were any who gave up their Jewish identity in the manner that Paul did. Oh yeah. Silas, Barnabas. The majority? No, not the majority. Okay. The, the small number were but, able yeah. to com comprehend. Yeah. Right, yeah, the right. ones that did <coughs> went with Paul into the Gentile community. They and didn't stay in the Jewish community. Right, and it's those that clearly um, were, were, were head and shoulders above, above, above the rest because yeah. they understood. Sure, yeah. sure. We're going to take a look at the scriptures okay. and they give that understanding. So Paul lays down the understanding 
The gospel he's preaching did not come from men. It came solely from the Lord. Now, the other apostles attest to this. Scripture teaches they all found Paul's teachings hard to understand. 2 Peter, 3rd chapter, verses 15 to 16. Now they give, matter of fact, when you read this, you see that they look at Paul's teaching almost the way Christians look at what we're teaching yes. today. That's okay. Went through my mind. That's Say that again. When you read this, you find that they looked at Paul's teaching almost the way Christians look at what we are teaching today. They have the same sure. response. Right. <clears throat> yeah. In order to receive. What we're being taught today, you have to shake off all the stuff that you've heard yes. previously yes. to make room for the truth. To make room, yes. yes. I like that. Yes. Second, uh, <coughs> Second Peter, third chapter, verses 15 to 16. <coughs> it says, an account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom <coughs> given him, given unto him, hath written unto you. So Peter is commenting on Paul's epistles. <laughs> and he's acknowledging the wisdom that Paul has is beyond the wisdom, basically, that he is operating on. Paul didn't start off praising Paul's works. He, he just said that it was hard to understand. Okay. Now, now he's... No, no, no. He's, he says both things. It's the same context. Mm. <clears throat> Verse 16. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of those things in which are some things hard to understand, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures. So Peter defines Paul's gospel in the other scriptures. You see it for yourself in the writing here. He's comparing Paul's scriptures to the other scriptures, and he's saying <coughs> for the apostles, the things in here that are difficult to understand. And he goes on to say, the other people, basically false teachers, mm -hmm. individuals who don't have the comprehension, are wrestling with Paul and Paul's doctrines to the point where they are being destroyed, trying to... Okay. Trying to copy, to distort what Paul is saying. They can't distort it because they don't understand it. The apostles don't understand it. But you notice what he goes on to say. I want you to focus on this. Which they that are unlearned and unstable rest as they do also the other scriptures. So you see he's talking about Paul's epistles and he's talking about the other scriptures. What are the other scriptures? The apostles doctrine. He's saying they can't even understand the other scriptures, let alone Paul's scriptures. So he's making a distinction. Why? Because Paul's gospel is teaching principles that are beyond their comprehension. comprehension. Their intellectual comprehension. So Just like Christians today <coughs> have the same response when you teach them. Yes. So the when you go onto, onto their own destruction, the false prophets Give us an example of the destruction that the false prophet would have, not being able to understand or comprehend. Well, he says they're wrestling with it. Mm. They're trying to come up with a copy okay. to amalgamate a following among themselves. They can't get off the ground. So they some. go down the tubes trying. We know someone it. like that, don't we? Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> but we want to establish this principle here. We're going to take it to its limit here. Why? <clears throat> We've established that the gospel that Paul taught 
the gospel that Paul preached was distinct from the gospel of the other apostles because the other apostles found some things in Paul's writing too difficult to comprehend. <clears throat> Doesn't and, this mm -hmm. imply that they didn't ask the Holy Spirit to give them comprehension? They didn't want to. Because immediately what that meant would mean they'd have to lay down the Jewish comprehension yeah, of the okay, scriptures. Okay. So the whole thing is, is they're not looking for a personal relationship with God. <clears throat> no, no, they have a personal relationship with them. What they're refusing to do is to take it to a higher level. Mm. <clears throat> they don't feel comfortable because Paul immediately talks about this. And it's a personal. I'll tell you one thing they found difficult. Turn to Galatians, third chapter. We've gone over this before, but this is going to be emphasized greater in your understanding. <clears throat> this would totally floor Peter. He couldn't deal with this, <clears throat> this type of a revelation. <clears throat> Galatians 3rd chapter, verse 28. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. You can deal with that. Uh, when he, even the Lord tells him, uh, rise, kill, eat, Peter. No, I've never eaten anything unclean. I'm, I can't go in that direction. How would he deal with this? So they, they, they laid it aside. But we're going to see, basically, as we go along here, the result of this. Scripture teaches these revelations were lost, not being pursued by the church leadership. And Paul emphasized this. <clears throat> we're going to come back to Jude, but turn to Acts 20, verse 26 to 28. Praise the Lord. Amen. Wherefore I take you now, he's talking to the elders, the leaders of the church at Ephesus. Wherefore, I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. For, for, I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Paul declares his gospel in its entirety. Notice what he goes on to say. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he had purchased with his own blood. Paul is giving him not a suggestion, a command. He says, you take elders in <coughs> Ephesus what I've given you, the whole counsel of God, and you feed that to the church. If you don't, their blood is on your head. <coughs> but he can't teach what he doesn't know, so he's He's taught what he can. What he refuses to pursue. Just like these did. Just like the other apostles. They found it hard, difficult. How are you going to reconcile there's no Jew, no, there's no Gentile? What are you talking about? They wouldn't go in that direction. Anyway, let's go on. <clears throat> Jude 3. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, 
it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. The faith at this point is dying. He says, contend for what you were once given. Why? Because they're not operating under the false teachers who are dominating the church. And Jude is desperately trying to get them to go back to what they once had. They they aren't talking. They aren't even talking about <clears throat> the apostles' doctrine, let alone Paul's doctrine at this point. Paul's doctrine is lost. Sure. Okay. Having said that, let's go on and see the result of that. As a result, next principle: Scripture teaches those who diligently pursued the revelation truths that they had will be rewarded by the Lord and the Prototokos saints at the second coming. In other words, for the most part, Paul's epistles, which are constitute the King James Version, most of, this is Paul's gospel here, not the Apostles' gospel. <clears throat> What's being said, those that pursued the truth that they were able to come in contact with and diligently held on to it and diligently applied it will be rewarded greatly. These constitute the people of the saints. Turn to Daniel, 7th chapter. Daniel the seventh chapter, <coughs> verse eighteen. <coughs> but the saints of the most time, Prototokos, mm -hmm. shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and forever. So the saints, and basically this is referring to the elders are going to take the kingdom, the five, actually the five kingdoms, from the Luciferians, and they're going to possess it forever and ever. It's their inheritance. Now, turn to Daniel 7, verse 27. And the kingdom, and dominion, and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all the minions shall serve and obey him. So the saints take the kingdom, they have authority over the kingdom, and then they're going to distribute positions to the people of the saints, who in their life applied the word to the best of their ability and brought forth fruit as a result. Turn to Revelation 4th chapter. Uh, Revelation 20 chapter, 20. verse 4. Revelation 20, verse 4, yes. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them. Who sat upon them? Prototokos, the elders. And judgment was given unto them. This is what Daniel is referring to in Daniel 7. This is the second coming. They have taken dominion over the kingdom. They now sit 
in supreme authority, authority has been given to them, they now are going to distribute the kingdom positions to the people of the saints. It also goes on to talk about a resurrection of those that were beheaded for <clears throat> the testimony and everything else. That has to do with the Lord directly overseeing this. We want this part because this is telling us that the <clears throat> people of the saints are going to receive their positions from the saints who have taken dominion over the kingdom. Now what kingdom is he talking about? The kingdom of the heavens. What part of the kingdom of the heavens? The scripture says, the glory under all these heavens. It's talking about the physical universe. The planets, the solar systems, the galaxies of this physical universe are going to be given to the people of the saints of the Most High to rule and reign under the saints of the Most High who will <coughs> dominate all things from the heavens. Two things. The elders are going to dominate the people of the saints. The high priests or the priests, temple angels, pillar angels, are going to dominate the elders. Why? Because it's the pillar angels that disciple the elders at the beginning of sorrows. Yes. It's the elders <coughs> that dominate the people of the saints at the latter part of the tribulation period in the second coming. So you have this hierarchy. Sure. So we should understand that when the elder, <coughs> the elder kings are ruling with Christ for a thousand years, the people of the saints are ruling under them for the same thousand years. Yes. And therefore, should we understand that the people of the saints are actually ruling the millennial human? Yes. yes. Including or not including the Jews at that time? Uh, no, that's under David. Okay, so only the Gentiles <coughs> yes, of the Gentile, period. Yes. Okay. yes, which are vast. Sure, I can imagine. <coughs> so here you have a, a, a brief comprehension of the, the hierarchical order mm. that's going to take place at that time. All depends on the, 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 the focal point of all of this starts at the beginning of Solomon's. <coughs> it goes on. It radiates out from there. <coughs> because the beginning of Sorrows <coughs> is the trigger point that brings in the elders, which later on bring in the people of the saints, who will constitute the ruling elites for the millennial period over the earth. So when Jesus spoke of John the Baptist as being the mightiest man, but the least of these, the saints, would be greater than him, he's talking about the people of the saints. Yes. Mm. He who is least yes. in the kingdom. Well, the Protestants aren't least. Sure. So he's talking about a hierarchical spiritual relationship that comes out of the human race and pertains to eternal position. At that point, I have no doubt that people might consider, you know, if we'd listened, if we hadn't listened to the scribes and the Pharisees, we'd be, we'd be up there. I'm Certainly. sure it's going to cross a few minds. Of course, of course. 